My name is Krista Kim, and I am an artist, a digital artist. I'm exploring metaverse building, and I also create NFT projects. I am also the founder of Techism. My name is Deandra Lawson. I'm the assistant curator of contemporary art at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. Krista, good afternoon. It's so nice to see you. I wonder if we could just kind of start the conversation by kind of your early inspiration, how you came to technology, how you came to work with light and digital art. Wow. Well, if we go way back, um, it was 2012 when I started uh, my uh, Master's of Fine Art Studies in Singapore at La Salle College of the Arts. When I rolled into the program, I was a painter. <laughs> and I, I really was in a, a, a personal crisis, identity crisis also at that time. So I began to meditate. I learned transcendental meditation in 2013 in the middle of this program. And what it did was it really allowed me to find myself and to seek solace through the work. So I started to create art that heals me. And um, I started to work with light. And it was at the Kyoto uh, Ryoenji Temple Garden uh, where I learned that art can be a service to humanity. So I thought, wow, I was stepped away from that experience. I thought, I want to create art that heals. And I also would love to create uh, a sublime meditative experience for others as an artist. And it wasn't until 2013 that I explored that concept in the digital medium. Yes. Well, and right, and, and I love that um, your instinct was to turn to technology and digital art because, of course, this is the medium and the visual language of our, of our time, of our century. I know that um, when you first began working with light, it was, were you in Singapore, was it? I was. <laughs> with the amazing um, skyscrapers and light, the city lights, right? W weren't they sort of also an inspiration as you turned to different uses of color? Absolutely. Living in a place like Singapore uh, and in Asia, period, right? yeah. it's very innovative there. And there's always change and innovation. Uh, the architecture is still new and there's always construction. I remember at night, one evening um, after my children were asleep, I took out my camera and I went down to the garden and I thought, I'm going to start capturing images of light. And I played with them on Adobe Suite, you know, just sure. really playing and experimenting. Yeah, totally. And then my Genesis piece, the piece that um, really started my journey, which uh, was a revelation to me, uh, a, black and, a black and blue uh, piece, very similar, mm -hmm. black darkness and blue light, uh, just, you know, just right in the middle, just vertical, a horizontal blue. And I thought this is only achievable in digital, uh, you know, with the gambit of color that's available to us now. I love how the work sort of engages color theory and color principles and the way in which, you know, in a practice like yours um, that is vested in meditation, um, how we could think of pure black or pure blue. Yes as cerebral space, as imaginative space, or also um, colors which reference our own our own earthly existence in the ocean or the sky. Um, I wonder if you could speak a little bit about sort of the significance of the gradient. It's really your signature. Um, and you speak so eloquently about the meaning of the gradient as a metaphor for for our existence today. And I, I'm a student of Marshall McLuhan. Okay. And uh, I've learned a lot from his his writings. And uh, I, I basically feel that my work is an extension of his theories. Mm -hmm. The medium is the message. We are now living beyond the electronic age. We are now living in, uh, you know, the age of not only information, but, you know, digital and metaverse and Web3, blockchain. But the way that um, we can interpret the, the gradient is that the analog world, the industrial revolution, was very um, black and white or different colors. People were categorized in their silos. Naturally, we become more fluid. And so fluidity um, and the gradient represents the new digital human that will transcend all the divisions of the past of race, religion, geography, politics, and gender. I feel that more and more as we advance in the technological age of blockchain and decentralization, as we enter the metaverse, and we become avatars. And it doesn't matter where you come from or right. it doesn't matter what you look like. Um, you, you're basically very pure in your interactions. 
and uh, transcendent. So the gradient represents this new age and, you know, the this new human interaction and the new dynamic of being a human being. I love that metaphor that you used to create with the gradient and, and, and I, fluid identities or plural identities into the future. But it seems to me, and, and perhaps you could clarify, that there's no judgment in, in your practice about which world or lived experience or virtual experiences are better. Yeah, you're right. I actually believe that, um, you know, technology should be a tool for humanity to elevate our, our experiences on Earth. So we should never be afraid of the technology. We harness it as a tool. Right. And people still paint. People still always will make photographs and we always will. So people still read books. Yeah. So new technology doesn't mean sort of a replacement of older technologies. It just means sort of these coexisting interdisciplinary plural kind of visual languages. And that is exactly what I wrote in my manifesto <laughs> in Techism. You're right. Exactly. We are not usurping the old. We are complementing and we are enhancing and we're moving forward in innovation, innovating. And so that's that's exciting. Yes. Can you speak to also then the new version of Continuum that, you, that you're that you debuting, uh, Continuum New Dawn? Yes. Continuum New Dawn is, well, whenever I create these pieces, I'm always creating a combination of my algorithmic paintings right. and then using the generative, you know, software, we're actually integrating it, myself and Efren Moore, my collaborator. And so the sequences of the paintings, the color schemes are always different. And with this piece, I wanted to have a more, because a new dawn, I feel like we're, it's a very, um, you know, it's a very uh, un unstable period yeah. in the world with war and with economic uncertainty um, post-COVID. And I wanted to create a piece that expresses not only the, the, the tumultuous energies that we're going through, but optimism that we can overcome it. It's really beautiful. And I love sort of, again, pointing toward toward futures and sort of getting ahead of technology. Um, I wonder if you could speak to the importance of diverse leadership or leadership by women sort of as we move into increasingly into um, virtual and digital worlds. Absolutely. The thing about Web3 um, in particular, you know, communities and economies that are built on the blockchain, um, it, it truly is a space that allows for diverse voices to be heard. And I believe that uh, Web3 is all about community first. And there are so many companies that are jumping into Web3, understanding that NFTs are the use case of NFTs as community building um, uh, technology and utility in that not only are you building you know this community but people actually have a say and they have a, a sense of equity in in the community itself a, a stake in it right a contribution to make um this means that women also can create these powerful communities and really leverage them to have their voices heard the stories heard i think the narratives of diverse people around the world are more heard in Web3 than ever before in any artistic community that I've ever experienced. So you are a recent uh, transplant to Los Angeles. Yes. I know that you are um, you had been living and working in Toronto. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about LA. You and I have been um, in conversation and dialogue for maybe over a year now. Yes. And we were so delighted that here at LACMA to bring, I believe the first works first of your works in a museum collection to come into LACMA's collection. Yes. Uh, it was incredible. We debuted them last summer in June, um, 2022, right here in front of uh, Michael Heiser's Levitated Mass. It was such an honor to be, um, to be placed beside his work. Um, the reason why it's such an honor for me to, to be in the LACMA collection is because the California Enlightened Space Movement has greatly influenced me. My rock star is James <laughs> Terrell. Uh, if I ever get the chance to meet him, it'd be a true honor. And um, I, you know, his his whole philosophy of light as a medium, you know, it's so visionary. Um, you know, the fact that, you know, Robert Irwin and, and Mary Corris and all these incredible California light and space artists are here. And, and of course, Rothko, I mean, no, no, all of my, uh, I would say my mentor artists are in the LACMA collection. And so um, to be in the same collection 
and to be part of the new guard, uh, the zeitgeist, uh, and the leading edge is, is a true honor. LACMA has been dedicated to digital art since the founding um, of the museum. We launched the Visionary Art and Technology Program in 1965. Exactly. Um, the first work of new media that we brought um, into the collection was um, Video Flag Z by Nam Jun Paik. Um, and so for an institution like ours, which has sort of these historic collections, um, part of our concept and vision is always to bring past and present butting up against each other. It's exciting for us to be able to work with artists like yourself and, and sort of make these collect, uh, connections um, for viewers to sort of understand links and history um, across time.